she's done that enough she doesn't need any of my help so welcome to our next exit everybody we have uh, got a little surprise for you this is our monthly expense report for may of 2020 but changes are coming we hadn't put out a video all month i apologize for that but we've been busy as you know from our uh, one of our last videos we've been looking for our winter destination to start uh, especially with the pandemic and everything to have somewhere to go and park for the winter or just to relax and uh, decompress and so this is it So we've all moved several times in our lifetime and we know even downsized living out of an RV it's still a pain to get moved into a house. We bought this house fully furnished and if you remember we didn't sell our stuff when we sold our last house. We got it all stored in a warehouse. So we've got quite a dilemma on what we're going to do with furniture. But one of the big things is getting moved in, getting stuff cleaned up and kind of making it home. And then we're leaving in about uh, two weeks, going up to Oregon. So we put in a order to Wise cameras and motion detectors, and uh, and then sensors that tell you when the doors and windows are open. And so I've got all that installed. So we, and then all of it communicates on the internet. We've got internet here at the house, and so it'll send us messages and it'll film and record up on the cloud any movement or any alarms that go off. So we think we're pretty good. We've met all the neighbors, the neighbors that are here, and got people watching the house. So we feel pretty good. So I know you didn't tune in to get a house tour, and so we'll get on here to the expense report. But I just kind of want to give you an idea of what we've been up to. By the way, this is our, I call it my office. I get this table, but over here you can't see, but Pearl's got a sewing machine, and she likes sewing stuff and she's been carrying it around all this time but hadn't got to sewing things so now she's setting up her sewing machine and gets to kind of dink around with her hobby but while we're sitting here let me kind of explain our lifestyle and kind of how we're going to do this going forward of which i don't totally have the answer but to start with we're going to continue our monthly expense report we'll probably be here in yuma four or five months a year uh, but we won't always be at the house we want to have uh, the folks who boondocked with out at Imperial Dam, that's only like 30 miles away that uh, we boondocked with last or last January. We want to have another boondocking get together and we want to make this one a lot bigger. The last time there were six, us and six couples, uh, but we want to maybe double that or triple that, you know, 15 or 20 coaches with double that people. So, so if you're interested, let us know. If you're going to be around Yuma come January or Quartzsite. We'll probably do Yuma and Quartzsite. Uh, but the rest of the time, we're still going to be traveling. Even, I think we've been here in Yuma since January and or December even. And we're anxious to get back on the road. We're getting kind of tired of one spot. So there's no doubt we don't want to stay here until we get too old to uh, travel much. So we're still gonna spend seven or eight months a year traveling around. We're gonna do the monthly expense report and I'll keep separate, because we have, with our expenses, now we only have our expenses and uh, our storage units, which we don't include in our expense report, and then any gifts or charity stuff that we give away is not included. Everything else that we spend is in there. And we've taken out our YouTube expenses. We're, we're not adding any YouTube expenses into our report any any longer unless it's something that falls under a hobby something is a, sometimes because this is kind of a hobby some things i'll put in there because it's fun to do i do it for me more than youtube so we'll keep separate our expenses for the house but we've got about probably almost 700 dollars a month with property taxes that's our biggest one we paid cash for the house so we still we our motorhome is paid for, our Thousand Trails membership is paid for, car is paid for, and the house is paid for. So there's nothing in here about mortgage or interest payments or credit card payments or nothing. Uh, but we will do our expense report and then below it I'll have our RV expenses and then I'll have what it costs to maintain a house. Because in talking to a number of you folks, 
probably there's more of you that want to keep your house and RV and you're going to fall into this same financial uh, scenario that we find ourselves in now. The house we had before was much, much bigger, much, much more expensive. It cost us about $3,500 a month for that house. We had a mortgage there. Mortgage and the landscape guy, the pool guy, it's repairs and maintenance, just a, a utility bills. Electric bill was 500 bucks in the summer. It was in Las Vegas and our water bill was a uh, couple of months a year. It was 500 bucks during the hot summers. We had a lot of grass. We had a half an acre and a lot of grass. So that's just too expensive. We couldn't afford it. But this here house, we can afford it. It's about half as big. It's about cost about half as much uh, to maintain. So we'll keep, we'll include that because I think that's of interest to a lot of you that want a part-time RV just like we're doing now. Travel in uh, the off season and then go home uh, to your home whenever, for the holidays or whatever time. So anyway, we'll work that out, how we're gonna take care of that. And uh, so most of our camping, for those of you that don't know, we say most at Thousand Trails. We bought a Thousand Trails membership for $4,000 and that's a one-time deal gone and we pay uh, 600, they just raised it, 640 or $50 a year, and we divide that number by 12, and uh, we put that much, we allocate that much each month for camping fees. And then the rest of the camping, we stay for free in a thousand trails, and if we, a uh, thousand trails are not in a lot of places, and so if we go to a place that doesn't have a thousand trails, we have to pay it, for that campground just like anybody would and so we add those into our monthly expenses and we run around eight dollars a night we spend on campgrounds uh, as an average for the year so some of you are probably new and not familiar with the spreadsheet so let me kind of run it down if you look this spreadsheet takes for the last 36 months all the way back to june of 2017 and then we scan it back it goes up up to May of 2020. So we got 36 months, three full years. And uh, this column, most of what we focus on is the last 12 months. So this column is May of 2020. And this column is the total for the last 12 months uh, here. So that'd be uh, June of 2019 to May of 2020. And then this column is the average monthly amount for each line item the average monthly for diesel fuel for camping uh, sites and everything for the last 12 months and then this last column is the average monthly expense for the whole 36 months going all the way back to uh, june of 2017 the average monthly expense for each line item so hopefully that makes sense we keep a couple of other things this row right here is our average daily expense for diesel fuel. And then right below it is the average cost per mile of diesel fuel. And then this one right here is our average nightly cost for uh, camping. So you can see the averages for the month, the year, and since we've been doing it. So hopefully that makes a little sense. We'll start off with our, uh, how far we moved and uh, work our way down through each line item. So we spent quite a bit of time uh, showing the house, going over the spreadsheet, so I'm gonna go pretty quick through this section here because it's just not, we didn't spend a whole lot of money. But in the month of May, we uh, drove just a couple of miles from where we were staying. You saw the spot was written uh, underneath that canopy to kind of stay out of the sun. And then we bought our house, moved a couple of miles. We had no uh, nights in Thousand Trails. 31 nights outside of Thousand Trails. And the reason I say that is Thousand Trails are free. So we keep track of that specifically. 31 nights outside of Thousand Trails. And uh, we bought no diesel fuel. We bought fuel right before we pulled in. So that... Uh, for the 12 month total, we spent almost $2,500 for diesel fuel. We're averaging for the last 12 months, $200 a month. And since we've been, the three years since we've been living the full-time lifestyle, we average $300 a month for diesel fuel. Uh, 
cost us zero this month, but for the last 12 months, we averaged $6.81 a day for diesel fuel. And since we've been on the road, we've averaged $10.37 a day for diesel fuel. And for per mile driven, 63 cents for the last 12 months, it's cost us 63 cents in fuel for every mile we've driven. And for uh, the 36 months, 49 cents. Campsites, now it's a little bit confusing. We canceled, we paid $643 a year in dues for 1,000 trails. They just raised it 20 bucks or something like that. And we canceled a lot of trails collection because we're not going to, for the next 12 months, we know about where we're going to be. We're not going to be in any trails collection. We're not going to be in any RPI. So we've canceled both of those memberships. So we've got the 643, we divide by 12 and we allocate $54 a month for 1,000 trails. We spent 11 days over in uh, John and Gigi's lot that we rented. Uh, we spent 11 days, that cost us $267. We did some rounding off and different things. Uh, and then we've been in the house here for 20 days and we figure that's about uh, $300. And that's mostly, only thing we're charging, reason we're putting that in here is that's is for our utilities. It's, uh, we pay about a hundred and probably, we're estimating, we hadn't got our bill yet, between 150 and 200 bucks for electricity uh, for the house and the RV. And then water, uh, trash collection, and uh, I'll show that here at the end. So we've got $620 for the month in campsite fees may seem odd to add some of that in there to some of you, but uh, that averages $20 a day we spent for a place to stay. For the last 12 months, we've added, averaged $8.44. For the last 36 months, $8.86. And obviously that's because of 1,000 trails. Uh, Motorhome repairs, the big old goose egg, nothing, which is uh, for us is pretty unusual. That's great. Uh, auto and gas repair, that's uh, all gasoline, two tanks of gas. We have been self-isolating. We've literally been in either John and Gigi's lot when we were there or here at the house. We've gone go to the store about once a week maybe and that's about all. We went to like a hamburger joint twice just because we was going through town and we stopped and got a hamburger. That's it, we've just been at home. Uh, for RV, auto, and the umbrella policy, we're changing our RV. Since now we have a home, we're getting rid of our full-time insurance, but that won't start for another month. So we're going back to Allstate for our RV insurance, for our car insurance, and we're dropping the umbrella policy here in, I think it's two more months we got. So currently we spend, uh, spend $1,556 for full-time RVs insurance, and I think that's gonna just about cut in half to just under 900 bucks. The car insurance stays about the same. And you know we had an accident a year ago, and with Allstate it didn't even show up. They said no, it's like $875 for the RV. And it's 800, I forgot what the car insurance is. I think the car insurance is a little higher with Allstate. But currently, $1,500 for the RV, $800 for the car, and almost $300 for a million dollar umbrella policy. We'd add all those up, divide by 12, $223 a month for insurance, and we buy our roadside assistance insurance through escapees. They have a great program, it's 99 bucks, and that came up this month. So $322 for RV, we've averaged 230, and since we've been doing it, 209. So that's up, but mostly because of the escapees, uh, roadside assistance. Groceries, 723. We have been using the, where you go on the internet, either to Fry's Grocery or Walmart, and we order online. They send us an email. The next day we go pick it up. We don't even go in the store. And they do great with it. We buy a lot of fruits and vegetables, and they, they give us good quality stuff. Pearl's happy with it. 
We're there maybe 10 minutes. It takes 10 minutes to drive to the store, five or 10 minutes for them to come out and load it in the car. We never touch anything. We never, no chance of the uh, coronavirus stuff. So we, we really like it. We're averaging a 939 uh, for the last 12 months and right at 900 for the three years. The main reason is we unloaded the refrigerator, in my mind, we unloaded the refrigerator and we just had a ton of food and so Pearl's cooking through it and we just didn't have to buy as much. We had a lot of stuff in the freezer. Dining out twice to the hamburger joint, uh, internet and cell phone. We got rid of our extra jet pack that we had a two year contract that finally ended so it went down 20 bucks. Our two cell phones, we have an unlimited jet pack and we have a smartwatch on our Verizon cell phone thing. It's 209 bucks. That's going to go up because we're going to go maintain. We won't show it on here on the motorhome thing, but we're going to have to maintain internet while we're gone here in the house for all of our security stuff. So that's going to go up a little bit. Direct TV, when we uh, got our Direct TV by getting the internet through Direct TV, through uh, uh, whoever it was, somebody that has an affiliation with Direct TV, we pay $65 for the uh, internet, Cent CenturyLink. $65 for the internet, but our direct TV went down from $94 down to $14 for the next year. So we save $80 on our direct TV for the next 12 months. And then we pay out 65 for the uh, internet here at the house. So over the next 12 months, that works out pretty good. Medical, we, uh, for our, your part, we're on Medicare. Part A is free, part B, we both pay uh, $145 each so that's 290 and then our part d for our prescription drugs since we don't really take much of anything uh, that's 13 dollars a piece a month and then we have medigap to pay the deductibles and co-pays and stuff so pearl pays uh, 125 and i pay 131 and that's a medi uh, part g so we add all that up it comes to uh, 572. Tinker took her in to get uh, gray high tinker. Took her in to get groomed. She's looking pretty sharp. 45 bucks. Uh, recreation hobby zero. Computer zero. Clothing zero. And mail zero. So a total of this month, $2,595. We've been averaging for the last 12 months, 3,777. And for the 36 months, we've averaged 4,128. So for the last 12 months, we've spent 45,260. And since we've been doing this, it's 49,536. So I hope that helps you. I'm not gonna put much in here on the expenses on the house. But we'll start adding right under here. We'll get you know just our fixed expenses, our utilities and stuff, and just add that in for those of you that are going to try to are thinking about doing the RVing and maintaining your house to kind of give you a, a little bit of a rough idea uh, how that works for us. And yours will obviously be a little different. So that takes care of it. We are leaving Tuesday. We're going to Las Vegas. We're going to, we hired some guys and we got a big truck. We're going to load everything up, haul it up here. We've got a big garage. We have a big shop, 500 square foot shop and about the same on the garage. So we're going to bring everything up here, put it in the shop in the garage. That costs us $350 a month. So we'll get to save that. And that'll almost cover half of what it costs to have the house. Uh, and then we're going to start trying to sell it off from here with a garage sale or whatever. And then on the 19th, Jeff and Lori are coming down to meet us. They're in Tucson. And we were going to caravan for a while, but we're going to, they're going to come here for a couple days. Then we're going to take two different ways and meet up in Oregon in, uh, right after the 4th of July. We're going to go see our kids in Reno and then head up to see our kids up in Oregon. And then they're going up through uh, California. 
So hopefully we'll try to get some more videos out. We'll do you a little walk through the house. If there's an interest, let us know. I don't even know if you want to see. It's just a regular house. I don't know if you want to see it or not. But we'll do a walk through if you want to. Uh, I think we're going to really love this Arizona. We're in the U uh, Yuma area. And uh, we're going to enjoy it quite a bit. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to do some boondocking this winter up at Imperial Dam and down in Quartzsite. If you're in interested in doing that with us, you know, we'll have us a big circle and hopefully we'll have a dozen or more uh, coaches and 20 or 30 people. You're not going to learn a lot from us because we're newbies at this uh, boondocking stuff. Most of the people, uh, Terry and Cindy, are over on the East Coast. They won't make it back, but most everybody else that was with us last year is going to meet up uh, out in the desert again. And uh, we're all just learning, but we can learn together and we can have fun and uh, sit around the campfire and tell stories. So let us know if you have an interest in meeting up this winter. That's in January. And uh, until we see you again next time, keep the wheels rolling. Stay safe. We'll see you at the next exit, folks. Bye-bye. Lost again, going back. Lost in the shadows of a million